Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to get a brand new set of wheels and tires on the car, put in a different steering box. This one's out of a 1956 Ford F100 pickup truck, and that should be much better than the earlier car boxes. And then after that, I'm going to get the steering linkages together so that we can actually get this car steered. So, enjoy the video. Alright, so I've got the new tires mounted on the new wheels here. The set of wheels that I have mounted on the car right now, I was just borrowing from somebody. So I did need to get a new set of wheels anyways. I wasn't just getting a brand new set just for fun. Um, but the tires that are on here now are 32 Fords, so they're 18 inch wire wheels. Um, the tire dimensions are 525 by 550 by 18. And I thought they looked a little bit bigger because 
after I modified the frame, the wheelbase became a little bit shorter and it looks very slightly out of proportion. So I decided when I was getting new wheels, I was going to go to a 17 inch rim and keep the same other dimensions of the tire. So these new tires are 525 by 550 um, by 17. But as you can see, they're the exact same outside diameter, or basically exactly the same. So that really didn't do anything for me. Um, but it'll work. It'll work just fine. And I do like the kind of jagged tread pattern a little bit more on these new wheels uh, than the old ones. So anyways, what I'm going to do now is get these new wheels mounted on here, and then I'm going to start to tackle the steering. Okay, so I have the steering box set up in the frame here, pretty much how it's going to be. I have a nice brand new pitman arm for it too. Now what I have to do is make the custom flange so that I can actually bolt it to the frame here. Now while I was at college, I had this cut out on the water jet. This is going to be the base that I'm going to use to start off of for the flange here. These holes I'm going to drill out bigger and then tap them so that I can just bolt this in from the outside nice and easily. And then I still have to do a lot of grinding to make um, the steering box actually fit in here. But most of the work is done already for me, which is very convenient.
Okay, so right now I have um, the steering box set in here. That flange is bolted on inside, and um, the steering box is kind of fit into the flange there. It's kind of setting in place. I have the steering wheel lined up about where I want it to be. I'm probably gonna have to shorten the steering column a little bit later on, um, but the steering wheel looks pretty good right there. So this is pretty much the position that I want to have it in. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty difficult to actually get back in to where that flange is. But I think what I'm going to try to do is like through here, I can access it just a little bit. So I'm going to try to stick the MIG welder torch in there and put a small tack weld um, between the steering box and that flange. And hopefully that'll hold it well enough that I, then I can unbolt everything, take it out, um, and then weld it up completely. All right, so I got the steering box mounted into the frame here. Right now the flange is just tacked to the steering box. So once I know that everything is exactly where it has to be, later on I'll go in and weld everything up completely. But the next thing I'm gonna do is work on the tie rod to actually connect both of the wheels. I'm gonna be using the original tie rod mounts on these spindles right here. And I have these Model A tie rod ends. I really like the look of this early style piece. But the problem is, as you can see, when this fits in there, when the wheel is turned like all the way like this, there's no room for the tie rod to come straight across because it runs into the spring shackles here. So what I'm gonna do is try to modify these tie rod ends so that the tie rod will actually kind of like have a little bend in it. Um,
Okay, so the steering is all together now, and this is really a big milestone for the project here. So the way it'll work is up here you'll have your steering wheel. That connects to the steering box down here. This is out of an old Ford F100. The steering box moves this pitman arm back and forth, which is connected to the drag link down here. This is just the original Model A um, drag link that I cut in half and extended with a piece of just conduit right now. I did order an actual piece of three-quarter inch tubing that will serve as like the whole length of this, and I'll have these tie rod ends welded to there, but I don't have that yet, so I'm just using this for the setup right now. The drag link connects up here to the spindle. You saw I added this second arm to the front spindle here to connect to that link, um, and that turned out very well. It blended together really well. There's a lot of weld there, so that's going to be very strong. These spindles are forged steel, so they weld just as fine as mild steel. Although I probably would not recommend doing this without a TIG welder. I don't think I could get as strong welds with a MIG welder or a stick welder, but with the TIG welder, I was really able to get in there and melt everything together, add a whole bunch of filler in, and that's going to be strong. And it looks really, really well. It looks like it's all one cast piece, um, like it came from the factory that way. So that's how it connects to the front spindle. That obviously will turn this wheel. And then I have a tie rod that runs across here using the same sort of Model A style tie rod ends here. I had to get a little bit creative with the clearance there because when this is turned all the way in, the tie rod has to clear the front spring shackles right here. So I just put a little bend in the tie rod ends right here. I made sure to put a lot of weld in there too and I actually built up the weld on this inside part of the bend there, so I'm not worried about the strength of that either. But I'll put the camera in the tripod real quick here and show you it, how it works. All right, so back up here now, you can see when I turn the steering column here, all those linkages move exactly how they're supposed to, and I have pretty good turning in both directions, which is just awesome to see. I think that I do still have a little bit more room to get a little bit more turning radius out of. I think that the limiting factor is going to be the tires here interfering with the hairpins, but you can see I still have at least an inch or so that I could squeeze a little bit more um, turning radius out of, but overall this is just awesome to see. Alright, so as you can see now, we have the steering, and it honestly wasn't even that difficult. It was a lot easier than I was anticipating um, to get all those these steering linkages to clear every other part of the car and be able to work smoothly like this. But once I modified those tie rod ends to put that little bend in them, um, there was no issue with the tie rod having clearance. And then welding that extra arm onto the front spindle went pretty smoothly as well. And I really love the look of that. Uh, it really looks like a factory piece that's all cast together. So overall though, it, it turned out great. I still need to replace the actual rod for the drag link here because that's just kind of extended there with a piece of conduit piping. Once I get my actual tube in, I'll be able to make that all one solid piece, and then that will be finished. Uh, the actual steering box itself needs new gears in it because it's pretty worn out, but I'll be able to get those in eventually, and then get the steering box rebuilt. But for now, the whole setup, you can see exactly how it's going to work, and it's really not going to change from this in the future. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.